Good morning and hello and welcome. It is the 17th of February, 2022. We've got some interesting news for you. If you were waiting for a brand new Porsche or VW, I, I hope you're sitting down. We have some not so good news for you. If your dealer has contacted you already, you would know. If not, then you might want to find a new dealer. But all of that is regardless. I want to start things off with news from Ford and also Mercedes as to what cars they might have just around the corner. All of that and more is to come today on Daily Car News. All right, first things first, Ford is releasing a new SUV. This will be based off of the Ranger sort of mid-sized pickup truck. It's a new SUV based off of that called the Everest. Yes, we are waiting for it to debut on the 1st of March. It will have either a 3.0 liter, 3 liter turbocharged uh, V6, a turbo diesel variant, or a four cylinder or six cylinder EcoBoost, uh, two liter or 2.3 liter EcoBoost gas engine. Um, nothing is really, nothing has really debuted yet. We, of course, we're waiting for the debut in a couple of weeks time, but very interesting to see Ford put another player into the market with the Everest. What a good name, by the way. Edge, Escape, Explorer, Expedition, and now Everest. Good on Ford. Um, the pictures are looking cool. Um, it's very dark and silhouette of course. They're going to want to keep things um, in the uh, in the dark before they go ahead and, and release it. And we also have photos and images of it in camo. It looks really interesting, sort of like Jeep SUV-ish size, a little smaller than that. The interior looks interesting and looks really nice, and you don't have that Ford dial anymore that you would normally expect in most Fords. It's sort of a um, traditional-looking gear selector. So, very interesting interior there. I guess not interesting if you're normal. Uh, but if you're Ford, it's interesting because it looks okay. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to see this. Another player from the Ford uh, company going to our markets. It'll line up against the... Um, Ford Fortuner, Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, the Nissan Xterra, that sort of thing. And I am hopeful that this car will hit U.S. shores, but I guess nothing is confirmed yet. We will have to wait until the 1st of March to see what Ford is doing with the Everest. Very excited to see this thing. They have released a couple of videos and photos online, and I do invite you to take a look at those past what we've shown you here today. Next, 2023 Mercedes eSprinter is enduring winter testing, so that's a good thing. We know it's coming. Um, winter testing is sort of, you know, one of the uh, best uh, places to test a vehicle. You are really pushing it to the extremes when it comes to uh, electric testing, and because the batteries are less efficient in the winter, you have to do more, you have to warm them up, you have to keep them warm, that sort of thing. It's not exactly like turning on a gas engine where you sort of just hope and pray that the starter will get you going and then you should be okay to go. But the Mercedes eSprinter is enduring winter testing right now. Um, we, are, we know that it will be produced later in South Carolina for the U.S. market, um, and it's now in Sweden, not far from the Arctic Circle, where things are being tested. The electric cargo van is... Um, they're doing thermal management tests, ergonomics and handling, and of course, making sure everything is going well under double digit below zero temperatures. So good for Mercedes for making sure that this thing is okay. You know, the Mercedes Sprinter is meant to be used almost anywhere. You know, everything from, you know, business to business, transport to people who live the van life, who live and, you know, van life in the middle of nowhere up in the mountains. So this is... Very cool to see. I wonder if Mercedes will also double this with another charging solution um, to help the people who are on the road as often as some Mercedes Sprinter owners are. But all of that is to come. We are expecting, again, this car to debut in 2023, and we are uh, expecting a choice of uh, three batteries, um, several body variants, a chassis cab, a box cab, and, of course, your cargo van. So... All of that and more is to come, and I am excited to see um, what we are going to get with the Mercedes eSprinter. I think right now, um, the things we have sort of confirmed, or at least are in the um, 
uh, believed rumors, if you will, are a 96 mile WLTP range of the current 55 kilowatt hour battery. So while we don't have any confirmed numbers from Mercedes yet, we do have believably strong rumors, if you will. Um, we're looking to double the range from 96 miles WLTP from the 55 kilowatt hour battery pack to over 200 miles from a 120 watt sorry 120 kilowatt hour battery pack um we'll have to see it's a big car that you need to power a lot and generally most of these will be staying in and around city center is going from hub to hub so we'll see what mercedes is up to when they reveal the car later this year in full of course we'll be including any photos and we will be following the story as it develops later this year next if you were on reddit you would have seen that the vw group ceo had just done an AMA and ask me anything where public figures take to the forums of the internet and say, all right, give me your questions. I will answer what I can. Two things I want to note from the AMA. One, they might be working on and are considering at least a VW electric pickup. So yet another electric pickup in the electric pickup wars of 2024 and beyond. What's this? The GMC Sierra 1500 EV, the Silverado EV from Chevy, the Ford Lightning, the Tesla Cybertruck, the, um, I guess the Hummer EV pickup, I guess, technically. I wonder, and the Rivian, of course, duh, obviously Rivian. So they will have a lot of competition to fight up against if they want to compete and do well in the electric pickup market, especially starting so late. So good, good luck. Um, VW, if you guys are doing anything, now technically, all he said was good idea, exclamation mark, end quote. So that's not, that's, that's, that's a little stretch from a confirmation, but it is not bad news in terms of those who want a VW produced uh, electric pickup. And then they also hinted at an electric bug. Let me go ahead and read you this quote regarding uh, the, the VW electric Beetle. Quote, our most emotional car in our history is definitely the microbus. This was my first priority to bring this icon back to life. But yes, many other emotional cars are possible on our scalable MEB platform. Next quote, if, I wanted, if we wanted to do a Beetle EV, it would be much better than today's model, much closer to history, because it would be rear wheel drive. Yeah, that's interesting. I hope this happens. The... Renders online, um, of course, are from not from VW. They're from other websites, but they're looking really cool. And I hope that this does come through through to fruition. The the Beetle sort of lost its charm, if you will, from what we had in the past to what we have now. And I hope that going forward with an electric Beetle, maybe you call it the Buggy or the Beetle, right? Um, it, it really does have the spark and do, doing a real real drive rear engine rear wheel drive electric beetle I think is a huge step in making sure you get that spark uh, for your car next Tesla is under investigation from the NHTSA regarding autopilot's phantom braking problem yes the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration confirmed that it has opened an investigation into Tesla's phantom braking problem under autopilot. The Silicon Valley company's cars have had issues where they, they see something, they sense something that's not there, and then they hit the brakes, sometimes as suddenly at 70 miles an hour on the highway. So if you, for those of us who are unfamiliar with how Tesla's autopilot system works, um, they have cameras, you know, regular um, light vision cameras, um, on the car that face forward, sideways, and back. And it uses that plus a bunch of computer know-how to guess and make decisions on, hey, this is what I should be doing, this is what I will be doing, and this is how it should be done. Um, and if somewhere in that the system is compromised or it sees something that it doesn't, that's not really there or it thinks about something that's not really there and it hits the brakes... At highway speeds, in the middle of traffic, that's an issue. So the NHTSA is taking a look at this to see what's happening with phantom braking. Why is it even a thing, right? 
so far in my sort of short but um, you know loud car history. I've only heard of phantom braking under Tesla. I can't be sure that it's existed anywhere else, but that's where it's most famous for right now. So they are taking a look at it. Phantom braking is a term used to describe when an advanced driver assistance system or a self-driving system applies the brakes for no good reason. Um, it can be falsely detecting an object on the road or anticipating a collision that it shouldn't be, but it is slamming on the brakes when it doesn't need to. So the NHTSA, of course, is taking a look at this and trying to figure out why and is this is a thing and what can be done to make it uh, better. Um, taking a look at a chart here, uh, Tesla owners have begun complaining about sudden unexpected phantom braking increasingly and mostly with 51 reports in November of 2021 going down to 32 and 24 in December and January following. Yes, it's, so it's gone up a lot, maybe, you know, 1 to 13 between May of 21 and October of 21, and a huge spike in November, probably following a, a software release that did something not so good. So we'll have to take a look at what they are doing here. I do have a quote from the NHTSA saying, quote, the Office of Defects Investigation, the ODI, has received 354 complaints alleging unexpected brake activation in 2021 to 2022 Tesla Model 3 and Model Y vehicles. Received over the past nine months, the reports have often been characterized as, quote, phantom braking by customers. Tesla describes the subject vehicles as equipped with a suite of advanced driver assistance systems, ADAS, features uh, referred to as autopilot, which Tesla states will allow the vehicle to brake and steer automatically within its lanes. The complaints allege that while utilizing the ADAS features, including adaptive cruise controls, the vehicle unexpectedly applies its brakes while driving at highway speeds. Complainants report that the rapid deceleration can occur without warning, at random, and often repeatedly in a single drive cycle. So I hope that both the NHTSA and Tesla can make sure these problems stop because they are dangerous, and I hope that no one has or will get hurt as a result of phantom braking. Next, if you are waiting for delivery of a new VW or Porsche, you might want to sit down. A US-bound cargo ship carrying 4,000 Porsches and Volkswagens catch fire in the middle of the Atlantic. Yeah. Thankfully, the crew were un unharmed. They, had to, they were able to get off of the burning ship using lifeboats, and they were saved by the Portuguese Navy, um, airlifted from the little tiny lifeboats as they abandoned the ship. But... The ship called the Felicity Ace was uh, carrying the vehicles from Germany um, to Rhode Island and it caught fire in the Atlantic Ocean. The ship sounded alarm after a fire broke out in the hold and its crew of 22 had abandoned the cruise ship and were safely rescued. Now at least 11 of the crew were picked up from a Greek tanker, the Resilient Warrior. Um, they were picked up there by a Portuguese Navy helicopter. In the hold were Porsche and Volkswagen vehicles destined for the United States. So if you were waiting for probably an ID4, probably a Porsche Taycan, um, if you were waiting for anything from Lamborghini, Porsche, or Audi, you might want to give your dealer a call if they haven't called you already. Now this happened late last night, early this morning, so we don't have too much more information other than what we know now, but we do have some photos from other uh, big rigs in the sea of a lot of smoke and fire coming from the ship. It looks like it was smack dab in the middle of the ocean, um, of the Atlantic Ocean, on its way again to Rhode Island in the United States. So I hope it wasn't your car that was affected. If it was, I'm truly sorry. And um, I hope Porsche, or at least VW, take good care of you um, with a new vehicle in the future. Back to the United States, the U.S. finally allows the use of modern matrix headlights. Yes, this has been a thing. If you um, are familiar with what's happening in uh, sort of car technology in Europe, you've been wanting to know why the U.S. isn't catching up in certain ways. Now, the matrix headlight is a headlight that'll sort of dim certain zones so that way you can have um, sort of high beams all the time. And instead of just dimming them all and putting, putting them back up, if you have a car coming, um, it'll sort of dim that region, right, where the car is, sort of specifically where the car is. And as it goes along, it'll sort of dim the path 
for the car. So that way they don't get blinded, but you get to see everything else. So instead of going from 150% brightness down to 50, back to 150, um, you only get sort of a sliver, uh, sort of cutting out that car from the light. Very cool to see. This has been a... Um, this has been wanted for in the car industry for a while here in the United States. This is actually a result of the um, a petition filed by Toyota in 2013. And now the NHTSA has finally approved, has formally approved the use of these headlights um, going forward. I don't know how this will sort of roll out. Um, this is quite early news. Um, it only came out a couple days ago, but, you know, all good news is good news here. So... Maybe we'll see in the next model year. Maybe we can retrofit some vehicles. Maybe we can, um, or we'll have to wait a few more model years to get this fully implemented here in the United States. But it is good to see that finally here in America, we have good, solid matrix headlights going forward. I'm excited to use these here in the States. I've never had the chance to. Um, a few of our team members have been able to go to Europe and try these out, and they look so cool. Um, but I haven't had my chance to do so here in the States. So very excited for this myself and I can't wait to try it out. Please, anyone with Matrix headlights in the States, give me a call. Even if you know other people are looking for them, I am so much cooler. Give me a call first. Um, all right, our second to last story. If you live in New York City and you have a loud exhaust, you might be getting a ticket in the mail. I've seen um, a ticket pop up online and I want to read a snippet from here, from it to you. It's regarding a BMW M3. Quote, I am writing to you because your vehicle has been identified as having a muffler that is not in compliance with Section 386 of the Vehicle and Traffic Law, which prohibits excessive noise from motor vehicles. Your vehicle was recorded by a camera that takes a picture of the vehicle and the license plate. In addition, a sound meter records the decibel level as the vehicle approaches and passes the camera. Yes, this is happening in New York City right now. If your vehicle is louder than it should be, then you might be you might be getting a ticket. Um, I don't see exactly how much that ticket was, but they are asking the owner to go to... Um, Either a, ah, I see, $875 is the maximum fine they have um, if they fail to appear for the summons and pay off the ticket. That's a bummer, and I hope that, you know, I, I get it, I get it. You know, New York is loud already, and the last thing you want is, you know, some, un, some modified Honda with a straight pipe exhaust sort of going down the road, um, echoing in the concrete canyons of New York City, but... It is a bummer for car enthusiasts. I hope there is a middle ground, maybe um, butterfly exhaust or something like that. But this is happening in New York City right now. If you are in New York City, just beware that this is going on. And our last story for the day, if you are a fan of Formula One, you will have known or at least are familiar with the controversial last race last year ending in Abu Dhabi with the title championship in the balance. After last year's controversial Abu Dhabi race, Michael Massey is out of the race director title. It will now be a rotating race director role, similar to how the F1 stewards operate. It looks like the role will be uh, switching back and forth between Michael Massey, a uh, race director from World Endurance Championship, and a race director from DTM. So the three of them will be sharing the responsibilities as race director and they will be rotating from race to race to make sure that things are as fair as possible throughout the season very cool to see i'm excited to see how this will play out throughout the season in 2022 with new cars and the drama from last year going into this year this season is going to be nuts i can't wait for it if you are a fan of f1 please give me a shout. I love talking F1 and I love talking racing with anyone and everyone. So make sure you go ahead and give me a shout for that. Very excited to see that Formula One is taking the feedback from last year seriously and that hopefully we will have more consistent fair racing in 2022. Thank you so much for joining me today on Daily Car News. As always, you can find everything you need in the description below. We are at underscore Daily Car News on Twitter. I am at Gary Fasalvo on Twitter as well. And of course, if you have any tips or tricks on what's happening in the car industry, give me a shout and maybe we can talk and get that shared with the rest of the world 
going forward. Thank you again for joining me today. We'll see you tomorrow on Daily Car News. Thank <laughs> you.